there was a, a coach who had a star player on his team. And he brought some scouts to come see this star player on his team. But the star player showed up late to the game that day. They started the game without him. But all of a sudden, you could see the star player come running out of the tunnel to get in the game. In fact, he barely had just sat down on the bench before the coach told him to get back up and get in the game. The star player got in the game and something was a little off. He wasn't running as fast as he would normally run. He wasn't dunking with the power that he would normally dunk with. He, he was not passing with the pizzazz that he would normally pass the ball with. And so midway through the game, as they were engaged in a particular play, the player jumped up in the air, came down, and started grabbing his leg. They had to pull the player out of the game. And so they pulled the player out of the game. And they say, uh, the coach asked him, what's going on? What, what, what's happening? What, what, what in the world is going on out there? You're not running as fast as you would normally run. You're not dunking with the power you would normally dunk with. You're, you're not passing with the pizzazz that you normally have. And I brought all these people here to see you today. What in the world is going on? How did you injure yourself? And the player looked at the coach with sadness in his eyes. And he said, coach, I'm sorry, but I forgot to stretch. Mm. I forgot to stretch. Now, that don't mean anything to you because some of you are uh, 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 not fans of sport and have not engaged in sport. But, but, but one of the things they tell you before you engage in any uh, heavy athleticism is to make sure you stretch. See, the reason you want to stretch is when you stretch, uh, 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 you allow your muscles uh, to endure more impact. You don't have to work as hard when you stretch before you get in the game. You increase your range of motion when you stretch. And, and as these 30s have crept up on me, I don't play much basketball nowadays, but I'm starting to learn that sometimes I got to stretch just to get out of bed. Uh, when, 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 when you're not stretching the way you need to stretch, you're not exposing your body to the next level. And so many times what happens is we go through life trying to do things on a level we have not stretched for. Now, I don't believe that that's just true outside of these doors, but I believe it's true when we come into the house of God. What am I saying? We love to quote Psalm 104, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise. But I would argue uh, the reason we quote it more than we practice it is because we have not been stretching before we got here. See, we love to jump to Psalm 104, but can I remind you that before you get to Psalm 104, there's Psalm 100, there's Psalm 102, there's Psalm 103, and then we get to four. And the reason I can say uh, at least four times as I read this scripture, into into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise, and I rarely got a response from anybody, is because y'all came in here stiff. Come on, Amen. come on. Wow. See, again, when you don't stretch before you come into some heavy activity, you will find yourself stiff and, and unable to perform. And so I'm going to say it one more time. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. And listen, that sounded wonderful. It sounded wonderful. But can I help you? That ain't the best you can do. See, 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 it would sound so much better. If you had did something before you got to the gates. Yeah. And the problem is many of us approach church the same way that brother approached the game. Mm. We think that we can just show up and do just anything. Oh, but the fact of the matter is you're going to hurt yourself and your neighbor trying to enter into his gates with thanksgiving if you did nothing before you got here. Yeah. So today I, I, I asked the relevant question. Why is Psalm 104 so often quoted but so rarely practiced? I believe it's because what I want to entitle this sermon, don't forget to stretch. Don't forget to stretch. I believe the reason I can say enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise and I get a clap here, I get a hallelujah there is because we are not doing what the previous generation of church would do. Uh, we come to get praise and the, the difference between this generation and the previous generation, they brought praise with them. Yeah. yeah, we come here to be reminded of what we should be thankful for, but the previous generation came already thankful. Yeah. And so today I want to share with you three things we should practice before we get to the house of the Lord. If you're taking notes, go ahead and put that as your header. Three things we should practice before assembling. Can I give you these three things? Before I do, can I take one more sip of water? I appreciate y'all. 
Good to see my brother Corey on this morning. Y'all put your hands together for him. I don't know if he's going to testify like his mama did, and he don't have to. But just know that brother got a testimony. <laughs> my God, I'm going to leave that where it is. Three things. Three things we should practice before assembling. One more time. Check. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Caught y'all slipping. Uh, three things we should practice before assembling. Y'all can wake up in a minute. The first thing I believe we should practice before we get to the house of God. Please write this down. I'm going to give you three M's this morning. We should practice worshiping God with your mouth. Amen. Before you come to the house of God and we say enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. One thing you might want to do, one stretch you might want to perform before you get here is to worship God with your mouth. Uh, the psalmist said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. And, and I'm going to be honest, I, I don't think it excites us the way it needs to excite us. It's because we're just calling it a joyful noise. Now, you know, Pastor Mike, I, I try not to be too deep. I am just a little bit educated, but, but I try not to get up here and flaunt and floss that. But, but I had to go to the original language because I, I'm wondering, God, why is it that we quote this thing, but we don't practice this thing? And, and I believe the scripture is true. We perish for a lack of knowledge because we don't know what we, we should know. We don't do what we we should do. And so I decided to look at this in the original language, uh, that beautiful language called Hebrew. Can I tell you what joyful noise means in Hebrew? Somebody talked to me this morning. He says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. In the Hebrew, that, 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 that part we translate as joyful noise is a word called ruah. Somebody say ruah. ruah. Now, not to be confused with ruach, which is the breath of God. That's, that's a different one. Uh, this is ruah. And, and, and that word ruah means to shout, to raise a sound, to, to cry out, or to give a blast. I'm going to say that again. He says, make a joyful, not noise. See, we, we call it noise because we don't understand what's happening. But, but he says, make a joyful ruah. Uh, make a joyful shout unto the Lord. Make a joyful sound unto the Lord. Make a joyful cry out unto the Lord. Make a joyful blast to the Lord. And, and the reason y'all can't get excited about that is because y'all missed the sermon before the last sermon that I preached called Shout It Out. If you understood the power of your shout, you would get excited about the fact that when we say make a joyful noise unto the Lord. See, a lot of y'all get intimidated because you can't sing and you've equated a joyful noise to a song note. But no, 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 no. You may not be able to sing this morning, but we can all shout. Uh, he says not make a joyful song unto the Lord, but make a joyful shout unto the Lord. And listen, I promise I don't have a bucket to carry a tune. But one thing I can do if I can't do nothing else is I can shout it out. I dare somebody to give God a shout on this morning. Can we test this thing out real quick? Give God a joyful shout unto the Lord. Ah, y'all a little rusty, y'all a little tight this morning, but, but, but I understand why. I understand why. Because you didn't read the latter part of this. See, it says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, a joyful ruah unto the Lord, but you missed the second part. The second part says, all ye lands, all ye lands. And see, that's, that's where you missed it uh, uh, because you stopped and make a joyful noise unto the Lord and you thought that the psalmist was talking to some folks but no 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 no. the psalmist said all ye lands okay you don't get it uh, 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 all ye lands in other words it don't really matter where you come from you should have a shout in your mouth for the Lord uh, uh, why is that important because if you knew where I came from you would understand the shout in my mouth if you understood what statistics told me I would or would not be you would understand the shout in my mouth see man Maybe some of you grew up in the church all your life, but I ain't been in the church all my life, how I shout. And, and it's not just limited to church folk. He said, all ye lands. Oh, oh, oh okay. Let, let, let's test this thing out. Uh, uh, another psalmist said it this way. Let everything that has breath <laughs> praise you the Lord. God, let's check real quick. This, this, we're going to play a little game real quick. Uh, 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 we're going to make a joyful noise this morning. Yeah. So if you breathe in, Yes. If I point to you, I want you to make a joyful noise, but I need you to remember that it's not a noise as in a song note, but it's a shout. It's a ruah. And again, we can't all sing in here. We bless God for Shakrita for helping us out, but we all got to shout. Let's see who's breathing this morning. Thank you, Lord. Oh. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Won't he do it? <laughs> <laughs> It's always one. 
It's always one. But here's what I need you to understand. Here's what I need you to understand. We're still at verse one. We still got to get to verse four. Now, why is it important? Well, in verse four, we're entering into the gates with thanksgiving and into the courts with praise. And so if I should practice worshiping God with my mouth and I haven't got to the gate yet, then that means I should be doing this before I get here. And maybe the problem when we get here on Sunday morning is that we're trying to work a muscle that we ain't worked in a while. Or better yet, to eat some food. Some of us work this mouth to talk some gossip. Some of us work this mouth to talk about some stuff we should not be talking about. Some of us use this mouth for all sorts of things and we won't go into them. But, but when's the last time you use your mouth to give God praise outside of God's house? And so the psalmist says, listen, before you enter into the gates with thanksgiving, you really can't do that. If you haven't done it before you got to the gate. See, the Bible says something interesting. It says, uh, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And maybe the problem is you can't come in here and praise God with your mouth because God ain't in your heart. And, and it's hard to put something in your mouth that's not really in your heart. In fact, Jesus said it this way. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And so maybe the problem is because we're not working our mouths for God outside of the gates that we don't know how to work our mouths for God when we get inside these gates. He says, make a joyful noise, make a joyful shout. And don't get me wrong. I know some of y'all come from the Baptist persuasion. And so y'all don't shout where you come from. Some, some of you come from, from, from church denominations, Catholicism, where you don't say nothing the whole service. You just sit there and twist your little rosary beads. But, 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 but I got a conflict because the Bible says not just the Pentecostal. Right. Not just the Presbyterian, not, yes. not just the uh, uh, apostolic, but, but but he says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Oh, oh. somebody say all. Oh. Oh. If you from anywhere, I dare you to give God a shout on this morning. Hallelujah. And, and, and I believe God will give you bonus points if you come from a place where you should not be able to oh, shout, yeah. but you got to yeah. shout anyway. Yeah. See, see, the reason I shout is because there's folks where I'm from that aren't alive to shout no more. There's folks where I'm from that are shouting from a prison cell. There are folks where I'm from that are shouting from a hospital bed. There are folks where I'm from that are shouting in situations they should not be in. But God... God and his infinite wisdom, God and his grace, God and his new mercies. I wasn't good enough for it. I wasn't smart enough for it. I wasn't strong enough for it. I wasn't fast enough for it. Shout when I step on your toe. I didn't have enough money in the bank. I didn't have enough connections in my phone. But God and his infinite wisdom, for whatever reason it was, God looked down on my life and said, I know where you come from. And I know a lot of people ain't make it. And I know you should be here, but since I didn't leave you there, since you didn't die there, since you beat the statistics that were written against you, you ought to open up your mouth and give me a praise. I know I did not give you the gift of singing, but you gotta shout it out sometimes. Can I help you on this morning? Because I had to have a conversation with God. I said, God, what's so important about the shout? Why, why, why do I gotta shout? You know. There's some folks who believe it don't take all that that, mm -hmm. that, that, that you can just clap your hands and give God a round of applause. It don't take all of that. God, why do we have to shout? But I, I kept reading the Hebrew. Can I share one more on. definition from the Hebrew that messed me up? Ah, I went to the Hebrew for this word ruah, and I got to the primitive root of it. And the primitive root of the word ruah means to mar. Now, Y'all aren't used to the word mar. That's, that's, that's kind of a fancy term. Can I tell you what to mar a thing means? Mm -hmm. to, 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 to mar a thing is to uh, destroy that thing. Mm -hmm. And so as I kept reading, it said to mar, especially by breaking. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see if I can make this plain. Um, there is, I hope it's Jesus. Uh, uh, there is an octave that opera singers can sing. And you've seen this before, where if an opera singer hits a particular octave, yeah. if there is glass in the room, yeah. the glass will shatter. Yeah. See, there, there is an octave that an opera singer can hit 
Now, I had to understand this. You know, I'm a why person. And so I was like, uh, uh, God, I, what, what's going on with this thing? And, and, and he took me to my friend Google. And so I started to Google, how is it possible that, that I can hit an octave in my mouth that will shatter glass? And, and I was watching a, a video, a scientific video about it. And they were saying that every glass, every really material uh, has a particular frequency. And if you tap it, you can hear what the frequency is. And so what an opera singer does is they hear the frequency and then they tweak their voice to the frequency. And if they can get it loud enough, it's you ought to shout it out. Uh, uh, it's because your issues have a certain frequency. And, and if you can get your shout to the frequency of your issue, there are some things you can break with your shout. Y'all still ain't shouting. Uh, 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 uh. Diabetes has a frequency. And if some of you would just begin to give your shout it out, uh, 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 diabetes would break. Uh, 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 poverty has a frequency. And, and, and if you would just begin to shout to God just a little bit, that you, you might be able to shout. What I'm saying is many of you are coming to church to get things broken, but I'm crazy enough to believe that if the word is true, there are some things you could have broke before you got here. Yes, sir. One of the things you want to practice, you want to stretch out before you get here, is your mouth. You, you want to worship God with your mouth, because if you will worship God with your mouth, there are some things that you would break before you got here. And then watch this. It's so much easier to praise God when I don't have as many issues. And the problem is because we're not practicing breaking these things before we get here, we come to the house of God with so much baggage that watch this, you can't lift your hands because you got so, can, can I give you a little bit of the gospel of Erica Badu? Bag lady, you gonna hurt yourself carrying all them bags like that. The reason you can't lift your hands is because you got all these issues holding you down. But I believe by faith that if you were to just give God a shout on this morning that some of your arms would get a little lighter if some of those things where they are the problem is we are so stiff when we come to the house of God because we have not been working our mouths three things we should practice before assembling worship God with your mouth because out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks and the reason you have nothing to say to God when you get here is because you had nothing to say to him before you got here can I tell you what I pulled up uh, 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 bumping in my system this morning? I know I told you Pastor Mike is a fan of hip hop, but but Jay-Z was not in my system this morning. I know I told you I love me some good R&B, but Brother Marvin was not in my system on this morning. No, no, no. Pastor Mike pulled up bumping uh, Kirk Carr and the Kirk Carr singers for every mountain, uh, for every valley, uh, uh, for every trial. You seen me through. For, uh, for this, I give you praise. Why? I had to start working my mouth before I got up here working my mouth. Because if I don't work my mouth out there, I can't work my mouth in here. Yes. Worshiping God with your mouth. The second thing you want to do before you come to the house of God is worship God with your muscle. Yes. Worship God with your muscle. Now, some of you looking at me strange like, Pastor Mike, what in the world do you mean worship God with my muscles? Are you saying that I lift weights and as I lift weights, I'm blessing God? I'm giving God hallelujahs and amens as I'm bench pressing? That's not quite what I'm saying. Worship God with your muscle and you'll find it in verse 2. Verse 2 says, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. I love what the psalmist did here. He, he He's kind of like me. He reiterates the previous point when he makes his next point. And so he switches from point one, which is worship God with your mouth. And then he says, you ought to worship God with your muscle. But 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 don't start wor uh, worshiping God with your muscles to the point that you forget to worship God with your mouth. And so he says, serve the Lord with gladness. But then he comes, around, comes right back around and says, come before his presence with singing. Now, what do I mean worship with your muscle? Well, the text says serve the Lord. Somebody say serve. 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 Now, that word serve is, is, is kind of simple. That word serve doesn't seem too complex, but 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 I went to the Hebrew and, and the word in Hebrew is abad. Somebody say abad. abad. Not only are you getting a good sermon, you're getting a Hebrew lesson this morning. Uh, uh, that word abad is simple. It means to work. It, it means to work. So, so what the psalmist is saying is work for the Lord 
with gladness. Now, it's important to realize that we are just at verse two. Mm -hmm. We have not made it to verse four yet. Verse four says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And, and literally, when you go to commentaries, they tell you that the psalmist is literally talking. And so what he's saying is work for the Lord, not in the church, but work for the Lord out there. Yes. And I really didn't expect to get too many amens on that one because most of you don't even like to work for who you work for, let alone work for God. But but the Bible says uh, in all we do, do it as unto the Lord. Now, I, I have a problem with believers who have a problem with their workplaces. Can I tell you why? Because if I'm to do everything that I do as unto the Lord, that means I don't work for the company that pays me. I work for the Lord who created me. Wow. Uh, can I put it this way to you? Uh, 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 you don't work for that company. You work for God and God pays you through that company. Yeah. And I think if we had that mindset a little more, we would do a lot better out there. The problem with some of us, the reason we grudge waking up tomorrow morning is because we think we're going to work for somebody that we don't like. Wow. And, and, and I hate to be this guy, but you might be right two times. You don't really like your boss, but if you'll be honest, you really don't like God. Mm. I didn't expect to get too many amens because how many people want to admit that they don't really like God? And you'll never say it with your mouth, but you say it with your actions. Mm. Ah, this is the part of the sermon where we go down, but I'm going to bring it back up in a little bit. Uh, 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 worship God with your muscle. When I say worship God with your muscle, what I'm saying is work for God. Because one of the things I don't think we teach enough is that worship is not just what I do with my mouth. Worship is what I do with my hands. And I don't mean lifting them. I mean lending them. Can I say that one more time? I don't mean lifting my hands. I mean lending my hands, lending my hands to something that needs to get done. Can I tell you something that broke my heart yesterday? Yesterday, uh, 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 I decided to come out here. God bless you, my brother. Good to see you. Yesterday, I decided to come out here uh, because I recently joined the Craddock Civic League. Uh, uh, remember that sermon I preached last week about practicing what I preached? Yeah, Pastor Mike practices what he preached because I said we need to make an impact in this neighborhood. And so how dare I not go out and make an impact in this neighborhood after I told you to practice what you praise? I got to practice what I preach. And so I joined the Craddock Civic League and they emailed me and told me that they were having a neighborhood cleanup in the area. Now I love sleeping in on Saturday. Nothing does my body better than a good Saturday sleep in. There are some Saturdays. I, listen, these eyes might not open to 1, 2 o'clock p.m. I love to sleep in. Nothing brings me more joy except the Lord himself than sleeping on a Saturday. But 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 I got to practice what I preach. And so I woke up early on Saturday morning and, and I decided to come out here and join them in the neighborhood cleanup. But can I tell you what broke my heart about me going to join them for the neighborhood cleanup? I went and joined them for the neighborhood cleanup and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, six, I believe, churches in here, but I was the only pastor out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to say that one more time. It broke my heart because I woke up early on a Saturday morning, although I love to sleep in. Nothing does my body better than to sleep in on a good Saturday morning. And I got up to come join the Civic League to clean up this neighborhood that everybody agrees has issues pick up. But, but I got out here and there are one, two, three, four, five, maybe six churches in this area, but Pastor Mike was the only pastor out there. Is it because we're spending so much time telling people to lift their hands and we're not telling them to lend their hands and the world is going to hell in a handbasket because our hands are lifted, but our hands are not lended. You want to know why you got to wake up and go to work tomorrow? Because you work for God and you might be the only light that company sees in a long time. You want to know why you got to go to work tomorrow? Because there's somebody in there contemplating suicide and they need somebody to tell them I used to contemplate the same thing. But then I found a man named Jesus who told me I shall live and declare the glory of the Lord. You want to know why you got to go to work tomorrow? Because there's somebody in there who does not know where they're going to get their next meal from. Ah, and they need somebody to tell them I've been young and I've been old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor see begging bread. And after you tell them that, buy them lunch. You know why you got to go to work tomorrow? Because there's somebody contemplating that nobody loves them. Ah, and they need somebody to tell them, I used to be unlovable. 
But while I was yet a sinner, a man named Jesus died for me, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, can I tell you, I was the whosoever. Ah, I'm an ex-prostitute. Ah, I'm an ex-drug addict. Ah, I'm an ex-drug dealer. Ah, I'm an ex-liar. I'm an ex-fornicator. I was in the whosoever, but God loved me before I was a saint. When I was a whosoever, God died for me. When I was a whosoever, God snatched me out of my environment. Environment. While I was before I could do anything for him, God did everything for me. The reason you got to wake up on tomorrow is because after you lift your hands here, God wants you to lend your hands out there. Yes. The problem is we can't give God what we don't have. Right. And so what happens is because we don't serve God out there. We really can't serve God effectively in here. Mm -hmm. I used to wonder, how is it possible to be a nasty usher? Mm -hmm. But if I follow her to her job, I'll see she's a nasty lunch lady. <laughs> see, 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 what we do out there don't drop off soon as we come in here. But we bring ourselves in here and, and we might try to dress it up. We might try to make it look good. We might try to speak tongues over it. But the truth of the matter is, be sure your sins will find you out. Uh, 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 that God will unveil everything. That, that there's nothing hidden that will not be revealed. I know you want to hide it behind a big church hat. I know you want to hide it behind singing. I know you want to hide it behind dancing. But no, 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 no. Your heart will be revealed. Yes. And maybe it's hard for us to find volunteers in our churches because we can't find any employees for God. Okay. See, what, one of the things I testified about is I, I don't believe I'm Pastor Mike because I was the greatest preacher amongst the preachers that were at Abundant Life Christian Community Center. But, but one thing I will say is I've been working for God before he put me in this position. Right. Right. See, see, the fact of the matter is before I was Pastor Mike, uh, 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 I was sound technician Mike. Before I was Pastor Mike, I was graphic designer Mike. Before I was Pastor Mike, I even dabbled in Corey's territory a little bit. I used to take pictures of Bishop and, and all the church services that was going on. I, I, I was working for God before I got to this position. And the problem is, we think that you don't work for God until you get here. No, 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 no. See, here's why I work for God. Because the Bible says promotion don't come from the north, south, east, or the west. Promotion comes from the Lord. Don't miss this. Who raises up one and takes down another. See, see, I didn't start working for God when I got here. This was just a promotion. I've been working for him the whole time. And while I worked for him behind the scenes, it qualified me for this position. And might I help somebody who's going to their office tomorrow? The reason you have not been promoted in a few years is because you think you're working for that boss you don't like. And the truth of the matter is you're working for God. And if you would start going in there on Monday morning, grateful to work for God, as opposed to feeling like you're obligated to work for that person, watch this. If they wouldn't promote promote you, God would take them down, raise up another, and then promote you through them, or you might be the promotion for them. Uh, but we got to not only work for the Lord, there's another part. Please don't miss this. Serve the Lord with gladness. I didn't expect too many amens there either, because uh, 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 not only do we not like where we work, most of us don't like what we do. And how can I do something I don't uh, I like to do with gladness. Oh, right. If I can make this plain, um, I should probably get some stock in Chick-fil-A. <laughs> the reason I say this is because if you were to look in my phone, I have the Chick-fil-A app on my phone. And, and if you were to tap it, you would see that I am a silver member, only a couple hundred points away from being a red member. Now, I know you thought gold was the top, but at Chick-fil-A, red is the top. And I'm a couple hundred points away from being a red member, which means I accumulate points at a greater rate. Uh, I think I'm telling on myself the reason Pastor Mike is getting a little chunky up here is that I've been spending a whole lot of time at Chick-fil-A. And listen, don't judge me. Uh, 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 I can't say what this generation say because my mama going to get me, but don't judge me. I enjoy some Chick-fil-A. It's something about the way they fry their chicken in that peanut oil. It's different. I know you used to Crisco, but that peanut, peanut oil just hit a little different. And I don't know what they put in the bread, but it just blesses my soul. And McDonald's fries are amazing, but have you had a waffle fry? I don't even know how they make it. There has to be a special machine. I'm not here to pitch a campaign for Chick-fil-A, but, but, but what I'm saying is 
I love Chick-fil-A. And as amazing as the food is, can I tell you what really keeps bringing me back to Chick-fil-A? Ah, it's that S word called service. And for some of you, that's a cuss word. You, you don't know nothing about that. Listen, I'm just here to get a paycheck. Can I be honest with you? I've been to some of the best Chick-fil-A's. I've even been to some of the worst Chick-fil-A's. But can I tell you one thing I have not seen? I know David says he's been young, he's been old, he's never seen the rights forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. One thing I've never seen is a Chick-fil-A employee with a bad day. And again, I'd have been in some Chick-fil-A's uptown, I'd have been in some Chick-fil-A's in the hood, but one thing I have not seen is a Chick-fil-A employee with a bad day. Now, I'm sure you can go on TikTok and find at least one. There's always one somewhere, but I ain't seen it. And I think I know why. I've noticed that every time I ask a Chick-fil-A employee for something, they don't just say yes. They say, my pleasure. I could ask them for something that's not even on the menu. And they would say, my pleasure. They find some sort of way to make it happen. I, I could ask them something that is really inconveniencing and their response would not just be yes. It would be my pleasure. Now, now why is that important? To say my pleasure shifts your perception. Yeah. See, I can say yes and still not like what I'm saying yes about. But to say my pleasure, what I'm saying is, I'll be happy to do this for you. Ah, uh, can I say something that might sting? How many of you have given God a yes? You, you've given God a show of hands. Let's let's take a tally. You, you, God asked you to to serve uh, to serve Him, and you say, God, I say yes. I think God has been watching Chick Fil A this season, and I think God is requiring of my pleasure. Because the truth of the matter is, a whole lot of us have said yes, but it was an aggravated yes. A whole bunch of us done said yes, but it was an agitated yes. A whole lot of us said yes, but it was an irritated yes. A whole lot of us said yes, but it was like, if you want God, I wouldn't be doing this yes. And the, 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 the danger there, the danger there is when you don't give God a joyful yes, it affects your performance. See, 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 if God asks you to do something that you're irritated with, you're going to take your irritation out on me. If God asks you to do something and you give him an aggravated yes, I'm going to see your aggravation through the quality of your service. This is why I tell people all the time, uh, we, we had an instance come up, someone had asked me about getting a paid musician and I almost caved in because I was like, the saints just, you know, they really want music. And I thought about that thing and I was like, wait a minute. I don't even have a salary. I come here every week and I give you all my best and I don't take a salary because I do this with joy. See, 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 I didn't give God a yes. I gave God a my pleasure. That, that, that God, because you've been so good to me, I'll give you my best whether there's a paycheck attached to it or not. God, I'll give you my best whether the folks appreciate it or not. God, sure, that even though there's 15 people in this room, I'm going to preach like there's 2,000. Because my response to God affects my performance. And I believe this season, God is not just looking for people to say yes. God is looking for some folks that say, my pleasure. The reason you can't enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise is because it feels like an obligation to you. See, most of you only lift your hands because Pastor Michael Shakrita said lift your hands. There's a difference between a church worshiper and a true worshiper. See, a church worshiper is reactive. A true worshiper is proactive. See, 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 you're only shouting because I asked you to shout. But a true worshiper looks back over their life and sees where the Lord has brought them from. And before you can tell me to make a joyful noise, I'm already shouting. Because watch this. I'm happy to bless the Lord. And maybe we can't enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his course of praise because it does not bring us joy. Can I tell you why that scares me as a pastor of a church? 
Because the Bible says there's a time that's coming where all we're going to do is praise God. Yeah. And if you can't handle two hours down here, how do you handle this position for all eternity? Uh -huh. ah, I believe that there's some things we need to do before we get to the house of, Lord, of the Lord. And the first thing we ought to do is worship God with our mouth. But we also need to worship God with our muscle. And that's not just lifting weights, saying thank you, Jesus, as we lift weights. But, but it's lifting our hands. Mm -hmm. Then lending our hands. But watch this. Being happy that God would even want to use my hands. Yeah. And maybe that's the difference. That, 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 that I don't tell God, God, you should be grateful that I'm serving these people. God, you should be grateful that I'm out here in this neighborhood picking up trash. You should be grateful that I get a word to preach for these people every day. Uh, you should be grateful that I stand on the door and usher. You should be grateful that I find a worship song to lead the people in every week. You should be grateful that I put together all these uh, 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 events for the church. No, no, no. God, I'm grateful that you would trust me to do anything. In your house. Yes. God, I'm grateful that you would trust me to work in an office I'm not qualified to be in. Mm -hmm. See, some of us get so caught up in the word that we miss the moment to worship. Right. See, I know you're sick of all the work that they're putting on your desk. But what you should be doing is saying, God, I don't even have the education for this, but they're still yes. giving me all this word. God, I don't have the experience for this, but they keep trusting me with all these projects. I don't have management experience, but they got me training everybody. I don't have management experience, but I'm training the manager. See, when you don't just say yes to God, but you say my pleasure, it not only affects God's response to you, it affects your response to him. And in turn, your response to everybody else. We can't enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise because we're not worshiping with our mouth. We're not worshiping with our muscle. I'm going to give you one more. We're not worshiping God with our mind. We're not worshiping God with our mind. Somebody saying, how in the world do you worship God in your mind? Do you just think positive thoughts all the time? Eh, that's a part of it. But the text says in verse three, know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people. And somebody probably should have threw a chair right there and the sheep of his pasture. I'm going to read that one more time. Uh, what should I know? I should know that the Lord, he is God. Yeah. I should know that it is he that made us and, and not we ourselves. I should know that I am his people, the sheep of his pasture. He says, after you worship God with your mouth and you worship God with your muscle, you want to worship God with your mind. But we still ain't got the verse four yet. So he's still telling us that these are the things we should be doing before we even get here. Uh -huh. ah, worship God with your mind. What do I mean? OK, uh, 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 that word. No, I, I went to the Hebrew and it's the word. Yada. Someone say yada. Uh, say it with some enthusiasm. Yada. Yada. My pleasure. Uh, it, the primitive root means to know, but watch this, to properly ascertain by seeing. I'm going to say that again. It's to know, but, but the primitive root of that, uh, and in its proper context, is to ascertain by seeing. In other words, ascertain is just another way of saying no. I know because I see it. Now, some of you are saying, I can't see God. God is invisible. How, how can I know God and I have not seen God? And, and even the, the writer of the epistle says the same thing. How do you love a God that you have not seen and hate your brother that you have not seen? God is not visible to the naked eye. But I don't think that's what the psalmist was saying here. I think what the psalmist was saying is not necessarily seeing God with your natural eye, but seeing God at work in your life. I know God, not because I've seen him, but I've seen his fingerprints yeah. all over my life. I, okay, let me help you out. I, I, I know God, not because I've seen him, but, but, but when I went to the car dealership with jacked up credit uh, 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 and a car worth more uh, than I had at the time uh, 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 with a person, the same person who told me that really wasn't much he could do for me, but he walked away, came back and told me it was my lucky day. Y'all missed the testimony. I might not see God with my visible eye, but, but when I look back over my life, I see his fingerprints all over my life. How do I worship God with my mind? It's me constantly acknowledging him at work in everything. Yes. Okay, uh, uh, we have this idea uh, called self-made men and women. We believe, some folks believe, not me, some folks believe that, that they are where they are because they worked hard, they did everything right, and boom, there you go, success. I don't believe in that. 
I don't. And, and I'm going to tell you why. I know some people who, for the most part, did everything right. Didn't cut no corners, did everything right, but 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 they were in the wrong place at the wrong time and everything went wrong. So that tells me it's possible to do everything right, but still not find yourself in success. My dear brother Corey can testify, he's one of the most gifted uh, 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 folks behind the camera that I know. And he just got one of the biggest breaks of a lifetime recently. And the irony is the people in the situation told him that should be his normal. So I watch someone who does everything right, who's gifted, who, who, who has the ability, but the opportunities for some reason aren't rolling in like they should until recently, because now he's walking in his new normal. Amen. So what that tells me is there really is no such thing as a self-made man or self-made woman. Right. What that tells me is that because you didn't see who opened the door, you don't know who to attribute it to. <laughs> see, 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 I, 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 listen, there, there are some doors that I've walked through that I know I wasn't strong enough to turn the knob. Right. And just because I didn't see the person who turned the knob don't mean nobody turned the knob. Uh, there were some opportunities that arisen uh, 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 where money popped up that I did not have. And just because I did not see the person give me the money don't mean they did not give me the money. Right. There were some ways made for me that I don't know who actually orchestrated it, uh, but I know I did not orchestrate it. And I could just think that I'm brilliant enough, that I'm fast enough, that I'm strong enough, that I'm smart enough, that I did everything right. But the truth of the matter is, just because I don't see who made the way don't mean nobody made the way. Yeah. And so it's Proverbs 3, in all thy ways acknowledge him, yeah. and he will direct your path. Yeah. And so it's me constantly keeping at the forefront that God is my all in all. Yeah. That as Sister Doreen Shirt says, the Lord is my strength. Yeah. That, 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 that he's the strength that I don't have. He's the intellect that I don't have. He, he's the opportunity that I don't have. He's the way maker that I have when, when I can't make the way myself. He's the provision when I don't have it. I may not see him, but I see him at work in all that I do. He says, uh, know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. Now, why is that important? Well, if God made me, then that means man can't break me. Uh, yeah. Come on, man. See, some of us come to church and we can't worship God because of what somebody did to us. And I'm glad I graduated from that place and I understand that God made me. And since God made me, folks can't break me, which means I don't care what you said to me before I got here. I'm going to lift up these hands and give God praise. I, I, yeah, we might have gotten into an argument before I got here, but I'm not here for you, baby. I'm here for God. I know what they said about you before you got to church, but 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 are you looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith? Or are you looking at them? Listen, God made you, and if God made you, they can't break you. Uh, but if I don't know that it is He that made me and not me myself, that then I don't know how to respond when I get in His presence. But but He goes a little further. He says, "But also we are our, we are His people, the sheep of His pasture." So not only is He my Creator, He's my caretaker. Yeah. Okay, uh, it's, it's hard for some of us to worship because we come into the house of the Lord with our cares and we miss the scripture that says, cast your care upon me for I care for you. And when you only know God as creator, but you don't know him as caretaker, you come to church with your problems and you leave church with your problems. Yeah, I, I've gotten to a place where I never leave here full. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's a saying they have in sports, leave it all on the floor. Yeah, when I come to the house of the Lord, I leave it all on the floor. There's an exchange. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. In other words, he says, listen, if you give me your problems, I'll give you my rest. But but, but don't leave out of it. You have the option, but don't leave out of here with your issues. But if you don't know him as caretaker, if all you know him as creator, you'll come here saying, God, I thank you for making me, but my life is breaking me. We worship God. With our mind, I, I, I know 
who he is and I know that he made me and if he made me this world can't break me if he made me this world can't stop my worship I know what the doctor said but hallelujah anyhow I, I know what my job is saying but hallelujah anyhow I know what my neighbor said but hallelujah anyhow I know what they said about my mama but hallelujah anyhow I know they said I would never reach this position but hallelujah anyhow I know they said folks from where I'm from don't make it here but hallelujah anyhow I know my daddy struggled with this but I won't. Hallelujah. Anyhow, I know this thing has run in my family for generations, but hallelujah. Anyhow, when I step on your toe, say amen. Uh, I know what they said about you, but hallelujah. Anyhow, I know they said they got to let some folks go, but hallelujah. Anyhow, I know they said I don't have the credit for this, but hallelujah. Anyhow, I know they said I would just have to ride this junk along for the rest of my life, but hallelujah. Anyhow, I know they said opportunities like this don't arise for people people like me, but hallelujah anyhow. I know they say people from where I'm from can't live in this neighborhood, but hallelujah anyhow. I know I've never seen an entrepreneur in my family with my name, but hallelujah anyhow. I know that God made me. And if he made me, he'll take care of me. And the challenge is we know God as creator, but we don't know him as caretaker. So we call him Jehovah Jireh, but we have no expectation of him to do it. How crazy is it for me to acknowledge an officer, but not expect him to do his job? And I know that's a reality for black America, but it shouldn't be. So why do we call God something but have no expectation for him to be it? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. We worship God with our mouth. We worship God with our muscle. We worship God with our mind. But again, we have not even made it to verse four. This is what we're supposed to do before we get here. But when we get to verse four, enter into his case with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. How do we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise? Because I'm not coming forward. I came with it. See, 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 when, when I've been worshiping God with my mouth and I've been worshiping God with my muscle and I've been worshiping God with my mind, you ain't got to tell me to do nothing when I get here because my mind has been on God this whole time. See, the reason we can't worship God is because our mind is on the wrong thing. But the Bible says he'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. The problem is we drifted all the way across the neighborhood and we drifted on what's happening at home and we drifted on what's going to happen at work tomorrow. Jesus said, take no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. The problem is our mind is not on him, but when I got my mind right, then I get my money right. When my money's right, my miracles are right. I, I, you got to say, neighbor, get your mind right. When my mouth is right, my muscles right, my mind is right, I walk in with a new mood. And now I can enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Why? Because I know what I'm thankful for. See, the reason we got to keep reminding folks from up here, didn't God wake you up this morning? Didn't God start you on your way? Didn't he clothe you in your right mind? Didn't he wake you up in a house with running water? Didn't he have a roof over your head? Didn't he put food in your refrigerator? Because you didn't come with thanks. But when you come with thanks, watch this. I don't have to say it. You'd be like, my God blessed me this morning. God, I thank you for waking me up. God, I thank you for a vehicle. God, I thank you for a job. I can't stand my manager, but I thank you for the peace and the strength to deal with them. God, I thank you for those coworkers. I thank you that I got a place to go when so many places uh, don't have employees right now. God, I thank you that there's money in the bank. It may not be as much as I want, but at least it's something. God, I think we don't have to remind you when you come with thanks, but watch this. We don't have to pump you when you come with praise. Yeah. See, again, the reason Shakri didn't have to pump me this morning, because I told you what I pulled up to, for every mountain, God brought me over. For every valley, you seen me through. For every blessing, hallelujah. For this, I give you praise. In other words, I had on my mind what I was praising God for before I came here. So when Shakri started singing her song, I was with her because my mind was on what God had already done for me. I know I had been out here praising God with my mouth. See, I'm one of them ones. I praise God as soon as I hear good 
news. Yeah. Soon as somebody tell me something yeah. great happens, I say, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. See, you think you got to be all indignant, but no, no, no. Even when I'm at the office, if some good news go down, I say, hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't go dancing down my aisle, but I'm going to give God a verbal confirmation yeah. that I appreciate yeah. what he did. Yeah. And folks can look at me strange all they want to, but I know right. who my help comes yeah. from. I know who made this thing possible. It was not me that made me myself. No, 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 no. I, I am his creation and he is my caretaker. Uh, I, I come with thanksgiving and I come with praise. But again, we quote it, but we don't practice it. And we don't practice it because we don't practice out there. In the same way, an athlete will never perform to their best if they don't stretch before the game. Our churches will continue to be mediocre at best mm -hmm. if we don't stretch before we come here. Yeah. What does stretching look like? Right. Working my mouth yes. for God, not when I get here, yes. but out there. Yes. Because I have nothing to work my mouth for in here mm -hmm. if I have not worked my mouth out there. Yes. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, but I gotta have them in my heart. And if I got them in my heart, it's not hard for me to say something. Some folks will never say anything when they get into the church because unfortunately where your heart is, your treasure will be. And not everyone who calls themselves Christians treasure Christ. Amen. They like the things he brings to them. But if they could have the things without him, they would. But is there anybody here this morning that says, I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold? If the job goes today, I'd rather have Jesus. Yeah. If the spouse goes today, I'd rather have Jesus. Yeah. Some folks are scared to say that because if it happens, they really don't know what they would do. But, but, but I can proclaim that confidently this morning. I'd rather, I've gotten to a place in my life where I've had a whole lot of money. I've done a whole lot of things. Listen, I'm not going to sit up here and act like I'm balling out of control or nothing like that. But God has allowed me to experience an amazing life. But I would trade it all today for him. And I'm not just honoring him with my lips. Oh, now. My heart is near him. Yes. And my mouth is full of praise because my heart is full of him. Yes. You don't have to pump and prime someone who has God yes. in their heart. Amen. He'll just That's come true. flowing out. Yes. Yes. What does stretching look like? Worshiping God with my muscle. After I lift my hands in here, I lend my hands out there. I say, God, wherever you want me to serve, I'll serve. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do. And I won't just work for him. I'll give him a Chick-fil-A response. My pleasure. God, I'm happy to serve. I'm, if you tell me to pick up trash, I'll pick up trash. If you tell me to hug this person, I don't even know them, but I'll hug them. If you want me to tell them that Jesus loves them, I'll tell them. It makes me feel uncomfortable and awkward, but I'm going to tell them that Jesus loves them. I, I will go hug a racist, a known racist, knowing he can't stand my black skin, but I'll go hug him. God, it is my pleasure, and it's going to bring me pleasure to do it because I knew it brings you pleasure. See, we love to quote that scripture. He withhold no good thing from those of us who walk up right or better yet he'll give us the desires of our heart but but the trick there is my heart should be so wrapped up in, in his heart that that the desires of his heart are the desires of my heart and so ultimately he's giving me really what he desires and not why because the bible says the heart is desperately wicked most of the stuff that we want is really not what god wants for us yeah. we worship with our muscle and we worship with our mind i know who made me so i know who can't break me and we walk in with a new move. 